They say an artist's work embodies their life story. For Rama Virati, that story was influenced by his Finnish immigrant parents, life in the industrial port town of Waukegan, Illinois, and coming of age during the Great Depression. Born in Waukegan in 1914, from a young age, Ray Marotti had an affinity for art and observation, taking in the sights and sounds of a growing and diverse city. When the Great Depression began on October 24, 1929, with the dramatic crash of the U.S. stock market, the economic downturn was keenly felt by the Roddy family and their neighbors. Roddy attended Waukegan Township High School from 1930 to 1934. His art teachers assisted him in successfully applying for a scholarship to study in a 12-week course on Saturdays at the Chicago Academy of Fine Arts. When his father died unexpectedly in July 1933, a 19-year-old Roddy was suddenly put in a position of supporting his family. He found part-time work at a gas station, but his mother encouraged him to find a way to continue to pursue his art. In 1935, Roddy joined the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC's, labor force as a means of receiving a regular paycheck to support his mother. The CCC was considered the most successful of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal work relief programs designed to counter the devastating unemployment occurring during the Great Depression. Operating from 1933 to 1942, the CCC provided unemployment to three million young men who worked on projects related to the conservation and development of natural resources on government-owned lands. He was sent to work with CCC Company 1699 at Estabrook Park, north of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Though he began as a laborer crushing rock along the Milwaukee River, his artistic talent was recognized and he became a CCC artist. While at Camp Estabrook, Roddy attended the Milwaukee Art Institute to continue his art education. Roddy's painting, The Driller, became an iconic depiction of the CCC worker of Company 1699 at Camp Estabrook. Roddy was discharged from the Civilian Conservation Corps on July 18, 1937. He returned to Waukegan to work full-time at the Cooperative Bakery as an assistant baker at night while pursuing his art by day. Roddy's paintings and sketches captured the challenges of the lingering optimism of Americans struggling through hard times. He found inspiration for his art all around him, including the back alley of the bakery, fishermen and boats at the Waukegan Harbor, and local nightlife. With his success as a CCC artist, Roddy reconnected with the local art community and became a member of the recently formed Lake County Art League. Through the Lake County Art League, Roddy's work was included in multiple exhibitions. Beginning in 1942, Roddy engaged in portrait painting. I like to paint the person as I see him, he said in a newspaper article. However, he found that most people preferred to be flattered rather than have the artist catch a mood, as he put it. Then, in 1944, while working at Waukegan's Sears Roebuck & Company as a display man, Roddy met Mary Sadler. The pair quickly fell in love and became engaged. But on November 12, 1945, Roddy, who had struggled with health issues for several years, collapsed while crossing a street in Waukegan. He died two days later of a cerebral hemorrhage. He was just 31 years old. Roddy's death devastated his friends, family, and the art community. His fiancee, Mary Sadler, and friend and art pupil, Carl Austin, became his surrogate promoters. Roddy brought all of the elements of the Ashcan School of Urban Realist Artists into his paintings and sketches. From a dark, muddy palette, Roddy showed beauty in the toil of fishermen working their nets, the culture of the finished baths, and everyday mundane activity. His command of draftsmanship and composition are evident in his commercial work through his loose figure renderings and the vast, inspiring landscapes he painted. For Sadler and Austin, it was partly a love story to collect Roddy's work. Roddy's mother and brother gave Sadler permission to sell his art, but she chose to save it. Following Sadler's death in 2003, her daughter donated the collection of Roddy's sketches and paintings to the Best Bauer Dunn Museum of Lake County. The Dunn Museum has the largest known publicly held collection of Roddy's work. The Dunn Museum is committed to preserving Roddy's work in the public trust and has had some of his works professionally conserved. The paintings were selected by the museum's curators as excellent examples of Roddy's work and his realist style. 
conservation and restoration of the works of art stabilizes and improves the physical condition of an artifact. Conservation treatment is undertaken by a professional art conservator. Treatment can include repairing the edges of the painting, cleaning and removing grime from the surface of the painting, and consolidating flaking paint using conservation adhesives. For the painting bar scene, the original canvas was lined to an additional prepared canvas to offer structural support, and losses of paint were filled and textured using conservation grade fill material. The driller is the most recent piece to be conserved. The restoration was made possible in part by donations to the Preservation Foundation of the Lake County Forest Preserves during the museum's exhibition, Rama V. Roddy, Life and Art in the Great Depression. In 2021, with support from the Finnish American Society of the Midwest, the museum was awarded a grant from Finlandia Foundation National to conserve another piece of this important Waukegan artist's collection. The museum has selected a unique double-sided painting for this project showing both Roddy's portrait art and his Ashcan style portrayal of Waukegan. Conservation will take place in 2021 and will include stabilization as well as cleaning and repairs to the paint. To learn more about the Dunn Museum and Lake County history, subscribe to our YouTube channel or visit www.lcfpd.org backslash museum.